In today's gospel, the words seem rather hard and kind of mean. Jesus says he's only there to teach the children of Israel, those who are confirmed in the Jewish faith. It was in the trials of Persia in the book of Esther, which gives us the spring fun carnival of Purim, when the twelve tribes of Israel were first called Jews or the Jewish people. They were always called the children of Israel exclusively up to that point. This was 350 years after Egypt and about 400 years before Christ, approximately. What makes someone a Jew or a Jewess today? To someone who is a conservative or orthodox Jew, this means your mother was a Jewess or you completed a conversion instruction through a sanctified rabbi who is trained in the school and art of Judaic conversion instruction. If not done by the right rabbi, or in the right way, the conversion could be declared false at any time, even decades later, after you'd been living a life as a devout Jew or Jewess, keeping kosher, maintaining all of the laws in your life and faith. For a Reformed Jew, they aren't as caught up in the lineage birth, for they believe if anyone in your family was ever a Jew, you are a Jew too, but that you'd still need to become one again to unlearn all of the other religions you've learned in the meantime. And the Reformers w want that conversion or relearning to be done by a rabbi of the Reformed School. To get citizenship in Israel, you must prove Judaism through your family. Once a Jew, always a Jew. But if you converted with no Judaism in your family, it would have to be best by a rabbi who was Israeli born. Back to the Gospel. Canaanites were most assuredly not Jews. They were those people displaced when the Jews came. Remember in the first reading, they talked about Canaanites being in Canaan, duh. But they talked about those peoples being there when the princes went and scouted the area for those 40 days. This was taking over the land of the milk and honey, as well as others who had settled in this huge trading metropolis in the intervening 50 generations since Moses came. The Canaanites lived with and traded with Jews, but as you can hear from the way the disciples speak of her, some think very little of them because they stayed and remained where they were defeated. The food of the children thrown to the dogs. The children refers to the children of Israel. Thrown to the dogs means given anything to the Canaanites that were meant for humans. That is how low they were viewed. The food is, of course, Jesus' gifts, his healing graces. But the woman intelligently responds, using the same analogy the Lord has chosen, using exactly his same euphemisms beautifully, surprising them with her wisdom and her faith. She says, please, Lord, for even the dogs ate the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Again, the dogs are the Canaanites, their masters, the Lord Jesus. The scraps is the bit of the healing grace he will allow to be given to an innocent child tortured by demons, not for any sin of her own. Healing the Lord need not even be present to effect, but can simply be caused to occur by blinking his eyes or just thinking of it, so great is his power. Mere scraps of his power is awesome to behold to any human at any time in the history of man. Then Jesus replies to her with great kindness when compared to the earlier exchanges. O oh woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. The Lord is moved by her faith that her faith caused, allowed her 
to stand up for her child and argue for what she needed against one men, two of higher status, three who put her down not once, not twice, but really harshly put her down into her position three times and each time she withstood and the third time the Holy Spirit stood with her and gave her the words just as he promised he would always do and he she had the strength and the intelligence on her own but there's nothing wrong with having a loving supporting spirit at your back when you really need him to and the child was cured. Bless the Lord Jesus, our Savior and our King forever.